Hello, YouTube is Jurassic Biscuit bringing you my first installment of my Let's Play for Darth Maul Ultimate Commander. In this Let's Play, I'm going to be playing as Sweden because when I first got this mod a long time ago, on the first game plan I played as was Sweden, and well, I just had a blast with it. I was all over the world, conquered most of India, Western Europe, all of the Baltic states, just had a really fun time and it was a good challenge and just made me like Empire Total War again so I'm going to try to recreate that campaign in this let's play I'm going to share with you guys uh, grand campaign um, don't want to be the UK France doesn't have cool uniforms, landlocked too small nah all the way over here Said the t campaign difficulty, the hard, battle difficulty, hard. Put on long campaign. End the game by 17.99. Okay, and start the game. Okay, okay. my goal with this um, campaign is to avoid war with Russia and to conquer all of Western Europe. India and um, possibly the Americas down the road will be options and I will probably put colonies there but my main goal right now is taking Western Europe and eventually the United Kingdom. My first order of business will probably be um, securing peace with the Russians ASAP for they are my arch enemies and we are on the brink of war as soon as the campaign starts but it's something that's definitely necessary. Your first priority should be to use your strong stand. No, thank you, lady. I think I have it from here. All right. Oh. Uh, let's see. Russia unfriendly. Request trade agreement. Hopefully they'll accept. All right. I'm in indifferent with Russia for the moment. That's good enough for me because as we continue trading, our relations will get better. And, um, let's see, who else should I trade with? I have a slaughter two open. Has Poland, Lithuania, those will probably be a good choice. Okay. Now, anybody else? Um,. Definitely do trade with Corland. Me pay 1,500. All right, that's nothing. For my treasury, I started out with 35,000, so I can recuperate that loss pretty quickly. So you can't trade with anybody more. Now, what to do next? Hmm. My first goal of what I want to do is secure Denmark and Norway so um I want to see who Norway is allied with because I don't want to go to war with any big people right off the bat um where is Norway Or not Norway, Denmark. No wonder I couldn't find them. Let's see. Allies. Poland, Lithuania, and Russia. That's going to be tricky. I want to get good relations with both of them before I can take Denmark. Because if I'm good enough relations with them, possibly better, then they'll probably not assist Denmark in the war against me. I do not want to fight a war with Russia. And Poland and Lithuania I could probably handle, but I still wouldn't want to do that. Alright, put my garrison in St. Petersburg. For I don't trust the Russians just yet. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Recruit regiments of foot. And how's my army already? 
Let's evaluate this. Got militia, pikemen, two cavalry units, cannons, and the general. This is the birth of the army that's going to take over Denmark. But as you can see, I have a ways to go. So once I get these six regiments of foot, actually, I think I'll throw in three line infantry as well. Then I'm going to start getting cannons preferably two or three and then I'll be ready to declare war on Denmark but I should not be so hasty and during this time I'm gonna recruit pikemen in Finland so I can just I can just ferry them over to my capital let's see the army of Norway does not seem so frightening, but it still definitely need an army to take them, and especially quench the public order of the um of their capital. All right, that seems like everything I can do for the first turn. Actually, I should ferry these guys over to my capital now. I'll buy a militia unit just to keep order. Half blocked. Alright. Get these guys to the capital, but they're out of moves, and so concludes my first turn. The year is 1700. Pax Sweden. Wait a minute. What is this proposal Great Britain has for me? Give this one settlement in exchange for the Bahamas. Huh. See, that's a, that's a weird proposition. Or I could probably put up trade in the Bahamas. And I could get money that way. But Ingra seems pretty like an important city. Because I remember in my first campaign that Russians wanted to buy this. So, I'm going to refuse this offer. Because I'm probably going to get more money through tax and other means from that city than I would through having trade posts in the Bahamas. And I wouldn't have to worry about pirates. Military alliance of Poland. Wait a minute, how much do they want me to pay? 10,000? Huh, I don't think so, buddy. I'll pay 2,000. And I'll take away military access. For I don't care about that. Nope, decline. Oh well. Ah, Russia. Now, this see, this is a tricky proposition, because I definitely need Russia on my side in all of this. But they want Inguria, and I'm not really willing to let that up. I think it'll be worth it, because this is what I did in my first campaign, and it didn't bite me in the ass. So, Inguria is yours, Russians. Oh, I also probably should have asked them to declare war on Norway, or not Norway, Denmark. Ah. That would that would help a lot, having Russia on my side, even though they probably wouldn't do anything in military-like, they'd probably assist me, and I wouldn't have to go to war with them. Alright, my army is beginning to take shape. I only need six more units. So I'm going to get these regiments of foot. And then I'm going to get th three six pound batteries. And then I'm going to march and take Norway. And then after I secure Norway, I'm going to take Denmark. Oh, 
definitely would want to make my ports good. Hmm. See, this port seems really useful right here. The actually, no, that belongs to Prussia, so I'm not getting that. But um, the port, the Norwegian. Not not Norwegian, Danish point port. All right, N not much more I can do. Oh, forgot to start researching. Plug bayonet is definitely a necessity. Probably gonna wait for that to be done before I um, start my attack because I don't know if the the Danes would have that already. Because if they don't, then I'll have a humongous advantage. I think possibly after I take the Danes, I'm gonna go to the Barbary states. Or actually, I'm gonna ta I'm gonna take Morocco, because Morocco has that little isle between Spain and North Africa, and that could be hugely important in the grand scheme of things. So let's see. They seem to be making a lot of buildings. I think I might just let them do that before I take everything over. Alright, one more turn and my army will be ready. And I think I'll just march them onto their capital. For these Danes have to go quickly. Alrighty, made the made my port. I'm very poor right now, so no trade routes. And um, let's see. I don't want this to be a fishing fleet. What I want it to be is a trade port. But then again, this is going to be where I'm going to be having most of my fleet recruited. So I guess that is necessary. And my army is ready. And plug bayonet is only two turns away. That should be enough time. Oh, let's see. Should I go for the capital right off the bat or take Norway? Probably their capital right off the bat would be best. To Declare war. Let's see. They're not allied with Poland, Lithuania anymore. They're allied with Hanover, and I do not care about them at all. And I'm allied with Russia and Russia, so they're on opposite sides of this, so they're either going to have to choose one or the other. And I have Poland, Lithuania. So, declare war, hope for the best. Okay, cool. Things worked in my favor. Only Hanover joined the Danes, and I'm not even exactly sure where they are. But I'm not afraid of them. Poland, Lithuania, and Russia joined my side. So I think I've shared my relations with them. Alright, and the battle begins. Or is soon to begin. I'm deploying 3,618 men. They're deploying 2,625. And most of their 
are actually pretty much all, actually all of their units are garrisoned. So only have three line infantry, two fire locked arms citizenry, four militia against my two cavalry, two generals, four artillery, two pikes, and a bunch of other stuff. Don't want to count right now. And assault. Well, I'm um, just pr hope that they don't have plug bayonets, even though it won't be a necessity, because I don't think I'm going to even be getting in a melee fight with them, because I think I can outgun them and make them rout pretty easily. And uh, But first, I'm probably just going to bombard them to pieces. But the biggest fight is not even about to take place right now. The biggest fight is keeping the population under control. For this is something I'm against, but most mods do not seem to have um, done this or um, changed this because I guess the developers of it like it. But it's the region, or like the capital of a nation, is insanely hard to keep under control. So you need to have a 20 unit army, have the taxes exempt have like constant public order buildings just to keep the company or not the company the population under control my apologies since I'm pretty late right now so I'm kinda tired but um how fitting it looks like in this um painting there's Swedes or well there's Russians but I think there may also be Swedes in this I can't tell if I was facing the Russians, this would be even more appropriate, but that's definitely not what I want to do right now. Alright. Pretty wide open map, really snowy. A lot of fog and stuff. Perfectly flat. That's good. And... Yeah, perfect terrain. Hmm. Well, probably best is if I put my artillery on the right. And it doesn't seem like these guys can go in the canister shot. I'm not sure if canister is a something you can uh, research or not, or it's just not with the uh, six pound batteries. But uh, anyway. I'm gonna put my pikemen with the cannons to deter enemy any enemy attack. And I'm gonna put my main regiments up on the line with militia on the flanks. And I need to stretch my line out as thin as I can, for I don't have them um, far by rank yet. But when I do, then um, I can have as small as line I want, as long as I can make it three ranks deep, at minimum. Then that'd be good. Put militia on the left. And I'm also going to put my cavalry on the left for a quick swoop up action. And put my generals in the middle. And the battle begins. Alright, not a threatening setup at all. Except it seems like the enemy line of infantry is moving towards my cannons. Perfect opportunity right here for my cannons, for these guys are in uh, two lines. Let's see, I think that took out some guys. Wildly inaccurate, but at least got took out some men. Ooh, 
move on my men up because I need to engage these guys because I don't know how long my pikemen can take being shot at by, guy, by missile troops. Ooh, oh boy. That was a nice shot. I don't know if you saw that, but um, here's the body right here. A full on across the line. Not a perfect one, but damn good. Uh oh, I merged my general with the main line. Gotta readdress my line before I can fire. And the first volley of my campaign is about to be fired. But I'm gonna tell these guys to hold fire. For I want only one regiment to fire. For that regiment can be commemorated for firing the first volley of my campaign. Let's see, how about you, 8th Regiment of Foot? How do you feel about firing a volley into these militia dogs? Alrighty then. This is a historic day, for the 5th Regiment has just fired the first volley of my campaign. Killing a good amount of enemies. Now, since the 5th Regiment, 8th Regiment, never mind, has already fired, I might as well let everyone else do. Alright, these guys are getting close. I want to wait till they're super close so I can unleash fury upon them. These arm Susan Ray are either brave or stupid for marching so close to my line. Alright. I would say it's getting close enough. And fire it will. Oh, nice. These guys are already wavering because they just lost over 75 men in a blink of an eye. Oh, but can, can my men get off another volley? Some of them are starting the fire. It's kind of silly how my how those guys just walked right up to my line. See, this is getting pretty easy. There's almost no difficulty at all. Let's see now my, my cavalry that's in reserve. 
I'm going to bring them in to completely swallow up the remainder of the enemy army. See, that's something I don't like about the AI, how they often not even return fire and just stand there in a disorganized formation. And these guys are about to pay the, pay the price for it. Not just from bullets, but from saber as well. Put in some slow mo just to watch these guys get absolutely massacred. <coughs> Alright, it looks like the, what, the remainder of their army is crumbling. But what's this? The fire the armed citizenry is taking another go at it. I like to see these guys actually try to use their muskets. Oh, looks like my wish was just fulfilled. Yeah, and then it's, it's getting kind of a boring battle to play because the enemy is just not doing anything. Alright, looks like what's left of the Danish army is about to flee, except this one unit, but then again it's about to meet, about to meet, duh, sorry, I'm tired, about to meet its maker. Alright. What's left of the Danish army right here is about to flee. They're already wavering and now about to face cavalry. I will not rest so that every single one of this unit is massacred. Oh, never mind. Looks like there's one more unit. I don't think these guys are going to last long. Especially with the human wave of militia about to go at him. Yep. Thought so. Okay, now that I'm for sure is the last of the Danish army here. Oh, huh. Man, every I'm just jinxing myself right here. It's this one more last unit. Okay, now this, I am absolutely certain, is the last unit. But yeah, what I tell you? Victory is ours. 
Whatever the name of this city is, the Danish capital is now under my control. Now the real battle begins. Heroic victory? I'd say it's more of a no shit victory. Uh, and here's the, the famous painting of General Wolf, I believe, on the Plains of Abraham, right after he won the Battle of Quebec, claiming New France in the name of Britain. He believe he died right very soon after the battle was won, <coughs> along with the French commander who died the, di the next day after it was a defeat for him. Let's see. Oh, Carl Gustav was leading my army. See, I lost 358 men. They lost 2,625. I'd say it's a good trade-off. Oh, it looks like these guys are actually playing very well. They seem pretty happy. I'm gonna go see how many units I can keep here. Alright, um... What about 900 militiamen? Nope, that doesn't seem to do the trick. Pikemen, regiment of horse, and a commander, and a general. No? Well, all my artillery. Oh, that's a shame. I think I need my full 20 unit army here for a while. But in the meantime, I need to take those guys out. So once I can, I'm going to start recruiting militia just to keep um, this place occupied and then I'm going to take Norway. But I think I'm going to leave all that up to the next installment of my Let's Play. I would like to thank all you guys for watching, and please rate, comment, subscribe, like me on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. That's just a pretty generic thing for most YouTubers to say. But, um, if you like it, just comment saying so. Personally, I like comments more than likes and subscriptions, but both of them are always appreciated as well. So, as always, have a good day and pack Sweden and long live it.